Jonathan, I'm so excited. We've been driving a lot of three-row SUVs lately, and those are important and practical family vehicles, but not everybody wants a big three-row SUV, and so we've decided to have a little bit of fun. Yeah, these certainly are fun, and whether you take the red pill or the blue pill, you transport to same kind of fantasy driving land. These things just transform the driving experience and they kind of transform me as a driver. So in this corner, we have the Hyundai Veloster N, Hyundai's first attempt at a hot hatch under its new N performance brand. Yeah, and here we've got the Honda Civic Type R, which has been a legend overseas for many, many years, but we're finally getting it here in North America, and boy, it's a blast. I'm so happy Honda sent it over to us. So these cars are both fantastically fun, but what's it gonna take to win this comparison for one of them? I think it's gonna be whichever one puts the biggest smile on our face. Let's give it a go. <laughs> it's pretty much a guaranteed tie. Okay, here we are. I'm in the Honda Civic Type R, uh, the blue pill as we like to call it, but it's no pill. It's got quite a bit of power that we like. This one's got 306 horsepower uh, and it makes its peak power all the way up at 6,500 RPM and keeps going past 7,000 RPM if you really push it. So it's pretty sweet that you get to really rev the snot out of this engine. It's a two liter turbo four. It's got direct injection and it's got VTEC variable timing. So it's got a little bit of extra punch at high revs, which is kind of like that nice classic Honda touch, but it doesn't go without the torque. It's got 295 pound feet of torque from 2,500 to 4,500 RPM. So you can actually kind of cruise easily if you're in that comfort mode or just sport mode where you can get going without much effort if you want to, but that's not really the answer in this car. The answer in this car is to drive it like crazy. Drive it like you stole it. Over here in the Velocir N, the engine specs on paper are pretty much identical. We've got 275 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque, but the torque band is a fair bit wider. It starts at 1450, goes all the way up to 4500 RPM, which is uh, great in those fun little twisties. But I think the more important point is, even though the power figures are lower, so is the price by a fair bit. We're talking about a $10,000 difference in price in this versus the, the Civic Type R. And whether that's going to matter to you really depends on how you plan to drive this thing. I think for, for tooting around on um, sort of windy country roads like we're doing today, this car does the job extremely well. Yeah, definitely. No, the Veloster N has got a ton of credentials for something at $35,000. It is another leap in price, but the Civic is also based on a larger segment car. So that kind of changes the proposition a little. You're not only getting more power, you're also getting more car from a larger segment. Despite being a larger car, the Civic Type R is actually lighter by about 15 kilograms. And with that more power, it's just got more going on. And it doesn't come at the expense of a ton of wheel spin. It can really launch, it hooks up. The software programming is fantastic at dialing back throttle when necessary. So you're really, you're not wasting throttle or tire and you get going in a hurry. So I love that. I mean, there's there's no question, absolutely, that this, the Type R is intended to be a, a racing machine. That's what it's built for. It is used not too far off stock in racing applications, but not everybody needs that much practice, that much capability and that much performance out of a, a hatch that they just want to drive around to, to work every day. And the Veloster N has a lot built into it. It doesn't have things like the Civic R's adaptive dampers um, and, and other, you know, there's a lot going on in the, in the Civic that, that really adds to its level of performance. But the Veloster N, it's so adaptable. It doesn't have the, the dampers like the Civic does that, all, that give it a lot of play in terms of, of how the suspension performs in the different drive modes, but it performs well. It performs fine. It's, it's the sort of thing that, that, that somebody would probably want um, for, for just going to the grocery store, but then you put it into end mode and it really tightens up and it's lively and it's just good fun in an affordable package. Yeah, I agree with you that the extra power is not something anybody needs or you don't need it as the difference between these cars, but these cars are not about need. Nobody needs a manual transmission, but both of these cars 
are standard with a manual transmission and only recently have they added an automatic for the Veloster. Um, so these cars are very much about the want and I want that extra power uh, and I want this transmission because this Civic Type R is probably about the best manual transmission on the market anywhere so I love it it's fantastic the clutch action it's not too heavy uh, so it's not tiring in that way but the shifter action is just fantastic it moves quickly it's got short throws it notches it it just feels fantastic and the Veloster is good but the Type R is just the best the other thing about the Civic and the Veloster that I find that are pretty much level is the steering it's like they're both fantastic they both have slightly different nuances I think the Veloster's got a bit more play the Civic Type R is a little bit more direct, and I, I like the Civic Type R better. It'll be for every person. They might have different tastes, and they might end up at a different conclusion, but that's also something that I just happen to prefer in the Civic Type R. You know one thing I do like a lot better in this? What's that? The sound of the thing. Yeah, no kidding. That Veloster N sounds mean. Uh, I don't know what it is about the Civic. It's it's not quite as magical in terms of the uh, the engine note and the uh, the exhaust note that uh, that the Veloster N is. They really nailed it on that point. So we've talked about the driving aspects, which are in this class obviously the most important thing. But we can't ignore the point that the Civic is just not a beautiful vehicle, Jonathan. <laughs> I don't see the Civic as a nice looking car and I get that a lot of people really think it's ugly but I just kind of find it's kind of like I don't care and it doesn't look like anything to me. It just looks like a bunch of stuff stuck on uh, but I don't think about it too much. I'm driving down the street in that thing. People look in the car, they're expecting to see a certain type of driver and it's not me and it just like it throws people off, it throws me off. I can't. I, d I don't think I could have it in my driveway. In the Veloster, on the other hand, you know, it's not perfect, but I think it's a lot better and it's a lot more flexible in terms of the type of person that might be willing to drive it. It's also more of a traditional hatch shape. Like, I agree that the Veloster is a, actually a little bit more sophisticated, not something that you'd expect to say about a hot hatch like this, uh, but it is, uh, and it's kind of got a more polished appearance. Uh, and aside from that really monstrous grill, uh, the rest of it looks pretty refined. So I appreciate that in the Veloster. Uh, but at the same time, it, like I, we said earlier, it is a smaller car and the Civic has four full doors compared to the Veloster's only three doors. So kids in the back are only getting in the one side, which makes it uh, occasionally having a battle about who gets to get in first. Whereas the Civic has the extra door extra space in the, in the rear seats and it's also got a lot of extra space in the trunk where it's actually got a pretty significantly sized trunk even though it's got a bit of a weird shaped hatch. Honestly I wish we could just keep driving these things all day but at the end of the drive kind of ended up with a split decision. What do you think Stephanie? Well, I got a couple of problems. One of them being that I fully respect that the Type R is a proper racing machine, full on performance, but I just couldn't own it. I can't have this in my driveway. I feel like I look like a poser. It's not made for me. I feel like I can own the Veloster N and still feel like a respectable adult driving around town in it. Um, I also think that, yes, the Type R is a, clearly a more racing driven performance machine it's also ten thousand dollars more and i'm not sure you're getting ten thousand dollars more by investing in that for everyday driving versus the veloster n for me it just doesn't bother me and plus when i'm behind the wheel i'm not looking at its face uh, <laughs> so i'm just appreciating just the action of that transmission which is fantastic the power delivery i love it the steering is amazing it's probably the best front wheel drive sports car ever uh, so i love it for that technological feat uh, but mostly I also think the $10,000 buys you a little bit of extra practicality and with two kids having those two back doors and extra cargo space that kind of seals the deal for me arguing for that $10,000 but above all I just love the way it drives I love the way it steers and at the end of the day that's what I would put my money for and I'd spend a little bit extra for that well we're gonna have to agree to disagree on this one I'm taking the red pill in this comparison I think a split decision is all right Buy the car that makes you happy. For Driving.ca, I'm Jonathan Yarconi. And I'm Stephanie Wallcraft. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and hit subscribe so you never miss another video.